it's better than expected. I've been wanting to do this Kular in okay conditions for a while, so it would be a dream if we do it before the <laughs> day goes dark. So incredible, the snow. <laughs> Almost the whole line is good snow, just the low part. So good, nice to be in the mountains with you. I am so happy. <sighs> Pass him, boys! Pass him, boys! Anna mennä vaan. Aina on sama homma mussutus tuossa alussa ja sitten anna mennä vaan. Sä nyt hengitä, ei, ei toi oo Antti niin paha. Anna mennä vaan. Ei oo mitään heikkoa, anna tulla vaan. Käykö siihen kylkeen? Ei se nyt. Joo. Sinne. Ja anna tulla vaan. Lying back sucks. <laughs> Lying on the back is not good. And when you like... Siis tuliks tossa kipua? Tossa siis kun liikossa. mä meen tälle selälle, niin siinä särkee. Ja sit jos mä... Mutta tuliko tuossa liikkeen ei, aikana? Liikkeessä ei tule. Niin just, eli pystyy, pystyy tekemään. Pystyy tekemään. Jo. Jo. Mutta tuota selälleen me osattuu. Mitä, mitä se kyljen kaatui? Kaaduiksa vai? Mm, siis jo. me tuota... Me oltiin sellaisella kurulla, jonka yläosassa oli pieni släbi. Joo. Ja sitten mä tiesin, että siinä on semmonen släbi että se lähtee siitä, kun mä lasken ja me arvioin sen sillä lailla, että mä oon tehnyt tämän tosi monta kertaa ennenkin, kun oon laskenut, että mä voin ottaa vauhtia sen verran, että mä pääsen sitä pois. Ja mm. mä pääsinkin sitä aluksi pois, mutta siellä alhaalla lähti semmonen ihan tosi mien, pieni semmonen toinen laatta ja se veti multa jalat alta. Ah, joo. Ja sitten ne yhty, ne pienet laatat ja sitten se otti mut niinku matkaa ja mä sain niinku pysäytettyä sen vauhin, mutta sen verran se osuu siihen kuruseinään, että kylki vähän osuu siihen. Enemmän se on siinä justi, että, että mitä se tekee päälle, kun niitä mokia tekee enemmän kuin se, että, tuota, no niin, että, että kyllähän sitä nyt aina itseänsä kuntouttaa tämmöisistä, ei siinä nyt mitään. Niin ja onko ne, onko ne nyt kuitenkaan varsinaisesti mokia? No. Onko ne enemmän sellaisia, että laittaa itteensä niin kuin äärirajoilla. No sitähän se Moi, mä oon Antti. 16V. Risk taking is part of the snowboarding culture. And you don't really think about it when you start doing it. You see people doing tricks in the local resort and you want to learn them. And risk is just part of that. You don't really think about that it's actually a risk. You are just so motivated to try to yeah. learn these new things. If you get hurt, you're bummed out, but in general you are in a controlled environment in the ski area and uh, 
Over there, taking a risk uh, is a little bit more easier, I would say. When I moved to free riding, I kept the same approach. I took risks the same way as I was doing when I was riding in the ski RS. I was not really interested about snowbacks and dangers. I was just only interested about soft snow and riding and jumping. And that's about it. Mä oon Ella Altti. Mä oon Antin vaimo, pitkäaikainen elämän kumppani. Me ollaan oltu yhdessä jo kohta varmaan 12 vuotta ja on elänyt tässä Antin, kaa, Antin koko vapaalasku tämän uran. Varsinkin silloin alkuaikoina niin mä olin ihan super kauhuissani. Aina kun se lähti reissuun. Ja siihenkin mun piti opetella kyllä tosi pitkään sitä, että miten mä pärjään sitten itse. Että mä en ala täällä viettää sitä mun elämää, että vähän niin miettien sitä antireissua. Että mun piti keskittyä mun elämään täällä ja sitten yrittää vaan jotenkin luottaa, että kyllä se sieltä takaisin tulee. Mutta se, että esimerkiksi Antti hyväksyy musta nykyään sen, että en mä tästä muutu nyt mitenkään hirveän yltiö luottavaisiksi elämää kohtaan. Että mä oon vähän semmoinen paljonkin varovaisempi kuin Antti. Meillä ei ole semmoista kitkaa siitä, että mun pitäisi olla jotenkin erilainen tai Antti pitäisi olla jotenkin erilainen. I think when I met Ella, things started to change. My perspective towards life started to change quite a lot. Not right away, but little by little. Through our relationship, I also started to think about other relationships that I have in my life through friends and to my family and the more I thought about it the more I started to think about risk taking the more I started to think about how I want to act in the mountains and what I really want from snowboarding I wanted to start understanding why there is an avalanche danger why are the features looking like they were. Why can't I do something on that day? Or why can I do something on the next day? The more knowledge I got, the more understanding I got that I had done a lot of lot of things without knowing that there was a massive risk. I had become so used to this risk that I thought it's normal to be involved in such a moments. <köhö> Mie lasken tonne alas. Se oli se laattakohta, mistä me puhuttiin. Mä ihan vähän koitin sitä, että mitä se tekee, niin se poppas heti. When I got into that small avalanche, I realized that my younger me was taking uh, decisions. I want to do things as responsible as possible. But when the drone is up and the wreck is on, idea of that I need to get that shot or I need to capture this moment because it would look cool takes over the whole mind. And if that happens, a bad thing can happen. I was very lucky to ride away from that. It's like all I could think about is that what if things would have gone wrong then maybe you know what would have Ella had to deal with and stuff. I need to enjoy snowboarding. I don't need to, like if I want to push, I want to push because of the right reasons. And it has to come from the heart and from the mind that I'm motivated to do that. It can never come from the must. It has to come from the joy. And on that day, it came from the must. And 
I never ever want to feel that feeling again. This is Onasvara, my home ski resort. Today we've been riding with my friend Jari and uh, doing what we love the most here, just to go ride park and hot lap and enjoy it like we've done for the past 15 years or so. so <laughs> it's kind of cool to know that the fire is still there. And it's good to ride park once in a while because it's a reminder the routes that I have. We're in middle of March today and it's plus eight degrees in the sun, which is very not optimal for this time of the year. But next week is showing a massive snowfall up in the north and hopefully we're heading up there, feeling healthy, feeling good and feeling getting that I'm ready to go back. Yes, have to go to a number two. I need a shovel. Okay, let's go. Melek. full of snow. Kilpisjärvi is located in the northwest border of Finland. It's basically the only area where you can get the feeling of big mountain riding in Finland. It's in many ways an unexplored area for free riding. Sure, many people have been there, but there's quite a lot of good potential for amazing descents. The problem in Gilbisjärvi is that it's located in the high country. It's very cold and very windy and you have to time it exactly right to catch the good conditions. Tuli ihan hetkeksi olo, että tästä kevässä 50 projektia, kun oli niska lumi tuossa. Meikä oli ihan sille, että hakku käteen ja tonni vertti ja tätä, niin no problem. <laughs> But when you go there, you are basically surrounded by emptiness. And that is something that you can't really experience anywhere else in Finland or in the Arctic. This is the only place where I have experienced such a feeling. Ante is a free rider, but most of all an outdoors man. Avalanche forecaster, educator and a police working in Finnish Lapland. He has extremely great knowledge about the Kilpisjärvi area. If there's one person 
I'm always contacting when I'm going there. That's Ampe. All right, we are the bottom of a little shoot with Ante and uh, planning to go check how the snow is. It's been very variable most of the time and it looks the same down here. It's also blowing a lot of wind, so... But it's something, so we'll go see. A unique spot in Finland, so why not? Say hi, Jaas! Hello, Jaas. On vähän siinä ja tässä, että onko tää se arvostunut. Siis kyllähän tää laskee, mutta että ei sitä kyllä niinku mitään. No, katsotaan. No jos me vedetään tää vaan sille Adventure-tyylille. Niin, niin kyllä. Vedetään tähän johonkin rauhassa ja silleen. Joo, joo, just. Se on ihan hyvä. Kyllä. Se on ihan hieno, jos ottais semmosen adventure, että laskis tähän, pysähtys ootta, se laskis tästä yhdessä ja niin. tässä semmosen kokonaisuuden. Niinpä. Jotenkin itellä ehkä enemmän saa irti tästä, kun että mä lasin jotain loivaa kuin. Niin käs siinä, semmoista seikkailua. Mä en eikä ainakin tykkää. Check, check, check. Hey. No, cool. Mister Eden, last kit today. Did that in the other last hour so far. Last hour we just did a cool. Lähtikö se nyt, kun me ollaan oltu täällä? Lähti, mä käyn huomannut, että se ei huomannut, kun se tuli, että käyn me vaan kattoon, niin katsoin, että oho, oh, tähän tuntuu vaan saamaan. Mitä tehdään? Jaakko, me ollaan tässä laatalla, että jos sieltä lähti kerta äsken joku, niin tässä on aika iso laatta, niin me lähdetään tästä pois. Se on aika isosti tullut, että jos vahvasti mä varmaan päälle tällä laatteen, niin jos siellä on sama laatta, the top player reacts. Yeah. We're on. Uh, okay, it reacted already. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's on. Uh, on ice. This is a. This is a bad sign. Uh, and that area over there is pretty dangerous. Do you think if like, so you are afraid of this part here? Yeah, more or less, because it, it goes over uh, yeah. almost one meter cliff. Well... Do you want to go? I'd like to try, but it's up to uh, both of us. The risks I am willing to take are always involving my own skills. Whether it's understanding the snowpack or whether it's understanding my own riding abilities, those are the risks that I can sort of control. Me jätetään tämä tekemättä, koska tässä on niin iso läpi, että jos on lähtenyt naturaalisti, niin sehän voi tulla meidän päälle, kun me otetaan aikaa tossa, niin me tulee joku melomesta pois täältä. Tää oli jo kuuma. I think backing out has become very easy now, but I hate it. I freaking hate backing out from the line. At the same time, it teaches you a lot about the decision process and it teaches you a lot about how to actually access something that is very difficult. Yeah, if 
Fucking hell. Se on ihan kunnos läpi. <laughs> oh. Ah. Oh, no. If you are very locked into some target and object that you want to do, it can blur your vision in a way and your mind. And you have to have this moment where you are hesitating and you are doubting your decision making because those will keep you honest and those will keep you true to what free riding and snowboarding actually is. And it's about being out there and riding whatever is front of you and making the best out of that. Joo, kräkkäs meikälä tuo. Joo, nyt meitä toisi. Nyt meitä tuonne jäälle tästä. Wow, 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 wow. I can, I can deal with the ice and I can deal with variable conditions, but I don't want to deal with the wind slab in variable conditions. It was the right call. Yeah, definitely. Oh my god, the run down would have been horrible. <laughs> <laughs> We are heading up to Parras, magnificent mountain that you always see when you come from Finland to Norway. And first you think, wow, we have a nice mountain in Finland. But a little later you get a painful reminder that it's actually in Norway. Because <laughs> over here mountains are a bit bigger and steeper and beautiful. This mountain has been on my list since the beginning of the whole project and I've seen it hundreds of times and it's kind of one of those mountains that you're thinking like oh, I'd like to go there I wonder how it is to ride there but you never go because when you cross the border from Finland and you drive down the fjord you start seeing so many lines because Lungen is right next door Luckily, in Arctic lines, we're going into lines like this. Today's plan is to go as high as possible and start digging some pits and figuring out the snowpack and then make some assessments if tomorrow could be a day for the line. I have to take this very seriously because in the past week there has been four avalanche accidents caused by humans. Okay. Well, right now the avalanche forecast is in three and there has been four or five major avalanche accidents in northern Norway in the past week. One person has died and at least one or two people are in critical condition in hospitals. This is pure ice. So what has happened is that it rained a lot it was very warm and then it got very cold and it froze and it's super slippery. Yep. Heti. I think the scariest thing is that 
these avalanches can happen now in the spots that are really popular for people to go touring many times people go to these places and they're like super familiar about like okay i've been there many times and i've crossed the field there but now this spooky layer exists there and then it's a totally different game right now i don't want to go anywhere where you have to like even approach a line that you have a, a section of a slope that could potentially be an avalanche you have to go above this layer and that has to be the bottom of the line the weather's been colder there and it might have been just snowing and being windy and it hasn't been raining so that's the thing why you have to go higher up we are right now in 1205 which is about 105 vertical meters higher than all the avalanche reports were saying about this difficult layer and it's like the bottom half of the of the line so if things are good here things might be good up higher too Ei tästä tapahdu mitään. No on siinä toi. Ei tätä saa irti. I think we got some good information about the situation. I felt like it's not as bad as further down the elevation, but it's still a bit tricky, so we have to go down and think about it a bit but it got cloudy and started to get a bit more windier so might as well get some uh, soul riding in before all the clouds roll in so cool riding holy i haven't done this type of snow for such a long time amazing Woo! Today is the day to go to the top and see if the line is possible. And I got lucky. We got Ile Eronen and the rest of the hyena pack with us. And uh, hopefully we can do some good turns down the face. Ile is former professional snowboarder and one of my favorite riders to still ride in the Arctic. Super good style and uh, flows the mountain perfectly, let's say. I've grown in snowboarding culture and Ile is part of this culture too. Pippuri and the rest of the hyenas and many of us are part of the culture of snowboarding that loves the feeling of turning some airs, some tweaks, some tricks too, of course. But the snowboard is basically a, a tool that you can uh, use to explore the terrain and hopefully ride some good snow. It's not about alpinism or conquering some big mountains. It's about like going to ride in these places that have good snow in that day and enjoying the flow. <laughs> Woo! But when you go into these big mountains, then the style of riding changes a lot. You must start dealing with the skills that you are more required in alpinism or steep snowboarding or steep skiing, you could say. For Barras, it's a beautiful aesthetic line that I think is perfectly done when you can just charge down and do some big turns. You don't have to do some jump turns on that mountain. If you would leave tracks like that, that would be a disgrace. <laughs> you gotta ride that thing well. <laughs> Thank you. 
mä menen tästä, missä mä nyt oon, niin tonne alas ja peippaan näiden kivien alta jotenkin tohon, ren, tohon ränni. Just sillä se on most badass friendland, man. Mut on pakko käydä tossa alempana vielä tsekkaa. Tossa on slabi. Se niinku näkee, mut vaikee sanoa lähteeksi siitä. Ei, Hä? on vaan ikävä poika. Mm. Tää tuu jännä tässä tää mestä. Se on vähän niinku. No onhan siinä. Täällä on tää p***tun. Häh, täällä oli tää jää. Täällä. Se on varmaan niinku jotain ho... Tiedätkö tommosta... Tätä kuuraa mitä tässä on. Niin. Tuntuu, että tää yläosa ei voi tykittää kyllä. Mut se voi myös toisaalta olla ihan hyvä. Niin se voi. Vittu kun ei sit ikinä Mut se olisi, jos sen haluaisi tietää, niin se olisi pakko käydä tossa. I think I don't go towards risks. I go towards goals that require risks. No, I have fine. There's a massive amount of work to be done before you can actually commit to the line. That can make you mad and make you obsessed about these things. But if you treat it as just a thing that can happen one day, you might be able to do it. And I think that's a healthy way to, to look at things. Tää näyttää ihan hyvältä. Tossa on slabi tos alapuolella, mutta jos tästä tulee ja kevyesti rollaa yli, niin se on varmaan ihan fine. Eiks vaan? When you're at the top and you decide like, okay, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna drop in and I'm gonna ride as fast as I can and in these conditions, in my abilities, that's a commitment that there's no more turning back. Thank you! Mitä pitkä pätkä sit sitä kovaa sulla niinku? Tää on paravan. Joo, laitetaan iisisti. Vitsi, aika nätti. Parras Dawn. <laughs> Nyt voi sanoa aina, kun tulee tota, niin ajaa autolla, että joskus kävin laskuvassa. <laughs> all in all, amazing experience. 
It's all good. I think like route finding here, checking the snow yesterday and then having Ile to join. And that made the day, you know, being able to do the line. So I think I'm ready for some good turns on the way down and maybe have a cup of coffee and cup noodles. <laughs> I think I've started to look at sustainability on a different way than before. To me it means how I proceed with my life in the mountains as well. I have to be very transparent about why I do things that I do. My calling in snowboarding and in free riding is to be in the mountains and learn about myself there more. It's not only about treading and riding anymore. It's about actually taking quite big risks sometimes. I'm no longer hunting just for perfect conditions and I'm no longer telling the story about how fun things are. I'm telling the story the way they are and that's it. And I'm doing that and I hope to inspire people by doing that. I don't know, did I go do deep snowboarding after all, you know? Fucking shred, slash the pow, do back three, enjoy it with friends, that's what it's all about. But dealing with mountains is different. <laughs> <laughs>